Don't look now, but Bitcoin looks poised to make new all-time highs. And did I forget to mention, spot Bitcoin ETFs made their debut in U.S. markets earlier this year, and the asset flows have been nothing short of tremendous. Today's ETF contest is a triple header between crypto-linked ETFs and ETPs from BlackRock and Grayscale. So what's the best way to invest in a crypto revolution? Stick around for the answer. I'm Ron DeLegge, and welcome to ETF Battles. Great to see you again. If it's your first time watching, welcome to the party. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like button. And if there's a certain ETF battle that you'd like to see, send me your ETF ticker symbols in a comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. Uh, be sure to watch our upcoming debut of an original series that I'm producing called Shifting Energy. You'll start to see new episodes hit your feed so don't miss it. Also, we just added Apple TV to our arsenal. We stream this program, not just on YouTube, but Apple TV, along with Roku, Amazon Fire, as well as podcast platforms like Spotify and iTunes. Pretty much, if you can't find us, you're not looking hard enough or you're not looking in the right places. Also, in the description section below this video, we've got links to our viewer resources along with links to our judges and our program sponsor, Direction. So check it out and don't miss that. Now, today's triple header ETF contest slash ETP contest is a cryptocurrency bash. And it's between products from BlackRock and Grayscale linked to Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a diversified basket of cryptos, IBIT versus ETHE versus GDLC. So which is the best choice? Judging today's triple header is Shana Sissel with Banrian Capital and Dave Krinsis with ETF PM. Judges, great to see you. Great to see you as uh, well, Ron. Hey, Ron, Shana, great to see you both. So our judging duo extraordinaire is going to help us blaze through four battle categories, cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and mystery. Keep in mind the mystery category is where our judges can surprise us with a factor or thing that they think is crucial to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere. They can also nominate or opt for split decisions. Now, I've got the scorekeeping chores. At the end of the program, we'll declare an overall winner. And keep in mind that none of these battle outcomes that you're watching are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. The first category we're going to start with is cost. Shana, please get us started. Uh, so this is easy because only one of these three products is an actual ETF, and that is IBIT. Uh, it has a expense ratio of uh, 25 basis points. Um, for the first $5 billion in the fund, it was actually 12 They did a waiver, uh, but the fund's now at $9 billion. So we are past the waiver point, and it's back up to 25 basis points. Doesn't even matter. The other two products are not ETFs. They are closed-end funds. Um, they are uh, very high fee, both of them at 250 basis points. Uh, and there's all sorts of other complexity to them. Uh, they don't trade like ETFs. So in my opinion, this is an easy category to judge. IBIT is the winner. The other two aren't even in the same like space. Strong start. Thank you, Shana. Dave, you're up next. How do you see it? Well, this battle is amazing. Before I get to cost, the recent Bitcoin ETF approval is a huge tipping point for crypto and blockchain. The establishment resisted Bitcoin for many years with countless top investors calling it a fraud just to be proven wrong. And we've seen this movie before. Over the past half century, the establishment resisted index funds at first, and then the establishment resisted exchange traded funds, and both quickly went on to dominate financial markets. More recently, the establishment has been resisting leveraged ETFs and cryptocurrency, and they both appear well positioned to dominate financial markets in the future because that's where the returns are. At ETF PM, we added leverage to the investable benchmark portfolios in 2016, and we first started adding cryptocurrency in 2020. So this crypto battle is another critically important discussion for all investors. As for cost, these funds range from 0.25% to 2.5%. And while that sounds like a big difference, their exposure differences justify the range and expense ratios, in my opinion. So while IBIT is the lowest cost here, I still call the cost category a split decision. 
that takes us next to exposure strategy. Dave, you're still up. So give us your take. So the Bitcoin ETF, IBIT, gives you low cost access to Bitcoin only in a spot ETF structure, which enables better asset price tracking. The Ethereum Trust, ETHE, gives you access to Ethereum only in a trust structure that can have major uh, asset price variants. And GDLC gives you trust structure access to an index of crypto, mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum, and less than 10% in smaller crypto assets. Now, IBIT could easily be viewed as the exposure winner for being all Bitcoin, the world's largest crypto, in an ETF structure. However, many investors predict a flippening soon in which Ethereum grows to be larger than Bitcoin, and I concur. Ethereum has been growing faster than Bitcoin, Ether is far more adaptable, and it has more use cases. We think of Bitcoin as digital gold and Ethereum as digital oil. So some investors view the higher cost and greater volatility of ETH to be immaterial, especially given the possibility of an Ethereum ETF approval within 18 months. And GDLC having exposure to smaller crypto assets provides a hedge against something displacing today's leaders. This means no clear exposure winner as they're all great crypto funds. So I call the exposure category a Ronnie D favorite split decision. Hey, I didn't say it. You said it. And I appreciate that very much. Thank you for that uh, that background. And yes, it is amazing to see the tremendous interest and growth of uh, the Bitcoin space and of course the ETFs tracking it. I should say cryptocurrency space. So Shana, you're up next for exposure strategy. I'm curious to hear your analysis. Give it to us. I have come at this in a completely different way. Then David, um, you know, Bonarina is an alternatives firm. Uh, crypto is a big part of what we cover. And uh, Victoria Bills, who's my chief uh, investment strategist, is our crypto expert. Uh, so we know the space really well. Uh, the problem is I completely disagree with David on this. Um, to me, I bit's the winner, and I'll tell you why. Um, Ethereum, the grayscale Ethereum, I agree with everything David said about Ethereum being like the ultimate winner uh, because of its flexibility and, uh, you know, the use case there. Um, but it's less liquid. It has a much lower market cap. Um, and um, the digital large cap fund uh, that Grayscale has, again, has more diversification if you think about it in terms of it has the 10 largest uh, cryptocurrencies. But here's why Ibit's my winner. You can't redeem the other two. That's why. So if you're going to invest in them, yeah, sure. You might like Ethereum. You might like to have the diversification. All well and good. You can't sell it, though. They do not have redemption programs. So I can't, in good conscience, make either one of those a winner, even if I agree that the underlying exposure is good, because you can't sell it ever. And without a redemption program, is it really an investment? And I would argue no. So I bet it's my winner. And I did a lot of research to make sure I understood that correctly. And because I didn't really believe that it was not possible at all to sell this product. But if you go to the site and you read the documents, it says there is no redemption program and they have no intention of filing one because they don't think it will be approved. So you cannot redeem it. So explain that real quick, since you've gone down the rabbit hole um, for our audience. So these these products trade on an exchange. Can't you just buy it and sell it like a regular ETF? Well, th no. Uh, so these aren't ETFs um, and they don't necessarily trade based on the underlying um, value either. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the Grayscale product specifically says that this product has not met its investment objective of, of reflecting the cost of ETH um, because uh, of the volatility of its um, NAV. Um, and, and so it's never actually given you the price performance of ETH. Um, and it says it right on the website. Now, I still don't know if I fully understand how the redemption thing works, but I went through their documents and on their website and both of them say we are not accepting redemptions at this time and that they do not have a redemption program and they have not filed for one with the SEC. Now, I still struggle with that because these were originally private placements, accredited investor only. Then they became what were called SEC reporting vehicles uh, about two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, um, which it makes them slightly different, um, which means they don't have to have an accredited investor hurdle anymore, but they're not easily traded. And um, again, 
go into the prospectus and go to the website and you will clearly see it states that they are not accepting redemptions at this time and there is no redemption program for either fund. So that takes us next to performance. And Shana, you're up. So break down the performance. Which of these products stands out? So of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin has been the clear winner as of late. So clearly um, iBit is doing better, but iBit has no track record because these uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs just launched. Um, and it's hard to give a um, win to the other two in this category because they don't actually reflect the price of the underlying uh, because of the uh, premium discount issue uh, related to these types of products structured. So I, I don't really have a winner in this category um, at all. Um, but for me, um, I guess if I had to choose, it's iBit because at least you are getting exactly what you think you're getting in that product. Uh, so I bit, but reluctantly. Dave, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to performance? For performance, the most important data point here is that Bitcoin hit a 1 trillion market cap in just 12 years. This chart shows Bitcoin was the fastest trillion dollar asset in history by far, as it took Facebook 17 years to get there. Now, IBIT just launched, as Shana mentioned, in early January this year, 2024. And the other two crypto funds here have only been trading for four to five years. So it's just the wildcard crypto fund, GBTC, the original Bitcoin trust, that has almost nine, nine years of actual performance history. And in this data chart, we show that the trailing seven-year return for GBTC was 43x. And that actually outperformed NVIDIA. GBTC even delivered more than five times TQQQ. Also, on a trailing three-year basis, ETHE strongly stands out. So I give the performance win to Ethereum ETHE and Wildcard GBTC, although for new purchases, we are buying IBIT. And we note that all of these funds give investors important access to cryptocurrency. ETFPM currently has long exposure in IBIT, GBTC, ETHE, MicroStrategy, MSTR, and BITX for two times exposure to Bitcoin. Very good. And for our viewers, just a note that GBTC prior to this year uh, used this trust-like uh, shell. Um, it just recently this year converted to a spot Bitcoin structure. So that's important to note. And certainly uh, the performance of GPTC prior to the ETF conversion um, was not anything close to, to a Bitcoin itself. So you'll, you will see some pretty big divergences there in historical performance, again, of G, G, GBTC versus Bitcoin itself. So thank you again, uh, Dave, for that excellent uh, analysis. Now, that takes us to the next category, which is the mystery category. And this is where our judges can give us that single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So, Dave, what's your mystery battle category and which of these products wins it? So big surprise here. Position size is once again my mystery category because crypto is an extremely critical and volatile asset class, making the decision on position size a bit more complicated. Now, this past decade, one of the biggest financial lessons was don't have 0% exposure to leading crypto. And at the same time, having too much crypto was a big risk as well. This means that a small position size in leading crypto is plenty for most investors. We believe somewhere between 1% and 3% is the right crypto allocation for conservative investors, and aggressive investors can justify having 3 to 6%. And since GDLC offers broader exposure through a market cap-weighted index of leading cryptocurrencies, I give the position size win to GDLC. Okay, thank you, Dave. Shana, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to your mystery battle category? What is it and which of these products wins it? So I agree with Dave. I, um, I'm i not a huge crypto bull uh, by any stretch, but I do believe it is an important development uh, and it's important as we go into the future. Uh, it is not the fraud that everybody likes to say. You know, they always say like there's embezzlement going on and 
drugs and yeah, you can do that with dollars too. Um, and lots of other things. So let's not make Bitcoin the bad guy in that respect. Uh, so I actually agree that everybody should probably have a, a tiny bit in, um, in cryptocurrencies. Um, 1%, uh, 2% if you're really, uh, okay with the risk. Um, even when they're horrible performers, cause they can be quite volatile, they are such an important diversifier. And even a one or 2% position when they outperform can make such a huge difference. So I actually agree with Dave with that. Now, where I'm going to be different is that I'm coming at it from, um, who is the, um, the, the, the fund, uh, provider? Like who's, who's issuing these funds? Um, and I believe in the crypto space, it's really important that you deal with somebody who is dedicated to crypto and that can give you lots of options. So I don't like any of these funds. If I'm going to invest in crypto, I am doing it with Bitwise. So I'm going to use BitB for Bitcoin. And then they have a whole slew of other products. And I know um, Matt Hogan has talked about they are very, very keen to get an ETH um, ETF out there as soon as you know they can. Um, but they are specialists in this space. They're really great on their education. They know it really well. Um, and they have products very similar to Grayscale. So, for example, uh, GDLC, there's a Bitwise equivalent in BitW, um, which is the top 10 cryptos uh, by market cap. Has looks very similar. Uh, so it, it, it's a good product. Um, again, not a pure ETF because you can't have that as an ETF. Um, has some similar trust structures, but um, there's opportunity there. And Bitwise really is um, leading uh, the uh, trail, if you will, uh, in getting crypto products available to the masses. And the team there really understands the retail market, having worked with advisors and retail investors in previous stops. So if I'm going to invest in crypto um, and I'm going to do Bitcoin, I'm going to do BitB, and I'm going to look at the uh, Bitwise product lineup to find other opportunities in the crypto space. And now we're going to give our judges one final chance to weigh in with their overall battle winner. So Shana, you're up. Give it to us. So I'm going to throw a wild card as my winner of the battle. Uh, you just heard me talk about it, but my wild card is Bit B. Um, again, um, I think it's the third largest uh, Bitcoin ETF by Flows since they launched, which is saying something because they Bitwise is not a huge name. This is not a huge conglomerate with this huge distribution strategy and all these wholesalers that can go out and get it. Um, Fidelity and BlackRock are clearly the leaders in uh, the gate in that respect. Grayscale benefited from the fact that they were converting a very large fund to an ETF, but they saw massive outflows. BitB has done quite well. Um, it's gotten a lot of um, you know press, obviously. They've done a good job in that respect. Um, a very low fee. And good exposure. And again, Bitwise as a whole is my one, where I consider my one stop shop for all things crypto. And they are not a client. They don't pay me to say this. I just truly believe in that team. I knew nothing about crypto until 2018 when I met Matt Hogan and he really helped me understand how important the space was and how important blockchain is. When people ask me, how do I learn more? I send them to YouTube. Matt has a great a presentation that he did to the CFA Society of um, Minneapolis or Minnesota, I think that's fantastic. And it's really great to learn from. And so for me, um, if I'm going to play in the crypto space, I want to be with somebody who is going to help me and hold my hand and help me understand it and then give me the right products and exposures that I want across the board. And so BitB is my winner and Bitwise is where I go for crypto. Thank you, Shana. Dave, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Give it to us. Well, Ron, I do like Bitwise. So those are great wild cards by Shana. Um, to recap, this cryptocurrency battle is historic because we finally have Bitcoin ETFs officially making crypto a legitimate new asset class. Bitcoin is a legendary innovation in many respects, and people need to understand that this technology is really working to protect small investors and individuals globally. Seeing Michael Saylor and his company, MicroStrategy, MSTR, go all in on Bitcoin is breathtaking. And even though Bitcoin is the world's fastest asset to reach a one trillion market cap, Ethereum has been growing faster. At ETFPM, we believe Ethereum will break Bitcoin's speed record to one trillion and eventually complete the flippening. So while all of these crypto funds and wildcards are phenomenal, 
I give the battle win to ETH, E-T-H-E. All right. Well, our judges have spoken, and uh, according to my battle scorecard, uh, today's winner is a split decision. We've got Dave choosing ETH, E-T-H-E, from Grayscale. He loves Ethereum. And I, listen, I don't disagree with him. I think it's got uh, a powerful story that's uh, building. And, of course, uh, I think the use case of Ethereum is certainly uh, compelling. And so that was his favorite choice. Uh, and then Shana making her argument in favor of Bit B, that's B with a boy, Bit B from Bitwise, which tracks Bitcoin. And this is a new phenomenon that we're seeing, spot Bitcoin ETFs. There's a number of them out there, uh, but she likes Bit B, and she made her arguments quite clear and quite plain. And yes, folks, I like the rule of thumb that our judges gave today. And at least if you're not sure about this, maybe just a 1% position, just as a starter. I think that's a good rule of thumb. And um, even if uh, uh, worst case scenario, your other 99% is invested elsewhere. And maybe if you don't like 1%, if it's too much for you, do half a percent or a quarter percent. But in the end, you will decide what to do with your own money. And again, I think our judges did a great job breaking down today's crypto bash Shana and Dave, we couldn't have done it without you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Shana. Remember, diamond hands, people. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Ron. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction. Get in touch. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. And keep your ETF battle requests coming. Hit me up in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed. I'm Ron Deleggi. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you on the next episode.